Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17. If you're a visitor, we welcome you. This is CKLI, Christ King of Life International. Lovely to have you. Um, oh, we are there already. Let's stand for the reading of the word. We start from, let me check if this is the right. Uh, it, okay, you know what? Let's start. Okay, let's start from verse 2, please. Let's start from verse 2 so that we get the whole story. Um, yeah. Then the word of the Lord came, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, yes, the word of the Lord came to, to Elijah. Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into, into Jordan, into the Jordan. And, and it will be that you shall drink from the brook and I have commanded ravens to feed you there. I've commanded what? Ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, Go to Zarephath. Now, don't, don't go to the wherever. Go to Zarephath now, which belongs to Sidon. Dwell there. So you must stay there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Now, the first thing that God commanded was what? The ravens, right? The birds, the ravens to feed the prophet. Then the second thing that God has commanded is what? The widow, not just a wife, not just a woman. Okay, I've commanded a widow to, to provide for you. Arise. Uh, I did not read it. You took it away. Okay. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to, oh, it's already, we did it. Okay, shall sure, continue. So, so he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there, according to the word of the Lord. The widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he said to her, uh, she called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in the bin and a little of oil in the jar. See, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in, in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. So you go in, but make me a small uh, cake. This is bread. Why do they, is this an IV? They say cake, right? Okay, it sounds like... Yeah, certain muffin of some kind. Bring it to me, and afterward, make some of yourself and your son. You make for me first, bake for me first, then you bake for your son and you. For this, for thus says the Lord, God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up. 
nor shall the jar of oil, of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. You know, see the early verses? Uh, Elijah did according to the word of the Lord. Went to the brook, went, did whatever according to the word of the Lord. Now the woman is doing according to the word of Elijah. She and he and her household ate for many days. Somebody say for many days. The bean of flour was not used up. Nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. Remember, when the miracle happens now, then the Bible says according to the word of the Lord that God spoke to Elijah. But when the woman was about to do the instruction that the Bible says she did according to the word of Elijah. Do you see the difference? I'm trying to explain some things to you. All right? Now, okay, according to the, okay, the word of the Lord, it, okay, right, continue. Now, it happened after these things that the son of a woman who owned the house, she was not a tenant, became sick. And his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, what have I to do with you, O men of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bird. Then he, then he cried out to the Lord. Now the woman is crying and then Elijah now is crying. He cried to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, my God, have you also brought tra tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge or with whom I stay? By killing her son. This is a question to the Lord now. He stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and said, Oh Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord had the voice of Elijah and the soul of a child came back to him and he revived. Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room to the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, see, your son lives. Then the woman said to Elijah, now by this I know. <laughs> Woo. By this I know <laughs> that you are a man of God. That the word of the Lord is in your mouth. Or oh, that the word of, of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. Now I know. Is this the last verse? Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. It was a long read, but I hope that, I just hope that we are not bored by the word of God. Some, they get good smiles when they read drama magazine and all other, opera magazines and all other things, you know. Then they get bored when the Bible is read. If it's like that, then you need some prayer. Some, lay, some laying on of hands or something. The Bible starts by telling us that the Lord, uh, you, you know, it just tells us that people who are called by God have needs, like everybody, you see? So they need to drink, they need to sleep, they need to, they need to, 
also um, they, they need also to eat, you know. Now, the Bible tells us that the Lord commands, and after God has commanded, then there's provision that's brought. The Lord commands, God says, I've commanded ravens, the birds, to feed you. And all of a sudden, we see the provision coming. We see the birds coming and giving Elijah meat. And, you know, in the morning, in the, uh, was it in the morning, in the evening, and things like that, to make sure that he was taken care of. The first thing we see is that we see that God can take care of the men he sends. So there we see there is no human intervention. God uses animals or God uses birds because God created everything. The first thing that God does in this scripture is that he proves that he can do it without people giving. Are you getting that? Uh, <laughs> so Elijah is uh, told by God to go to the brook and to, to stay there and then he's fed. And then after he has he's been fed, then God said, it's enough. I want you to go now to the human being, you know. And then God says that I don't only command the birds, but also I can also command human beings to feed you. Then God says, go to Zarephath, there I've commanded a widow. The amazing thing is that God makes sure that he commands a person who is hopeless. A widow, somebody that had the husband died, or somebody that had a, a provider dying, then God says, I've commanded that person. Somebody who does not have any job and any work, then God says, I've commanded. But, you know, you know, this person does not have anything, but she only has the command of God upon her life. She does not have anything else, but the command of God is upon her life of what she has to do. You know, it's amazing that most of the time we think that God will give responsibility, uh, great responsibilities to the people that, that, that qualify or that have ability or that have, uh, that have proven that they can do things. But God does not look at things like people look at things. God commands a person and when you look at the person's condition, then you wonder, how can God say that? Uh, are, are you hearing this? Because when you look at the, at the life of the woman, you, you just ask yourself, how can God command a person who has the last meal and who's planning suicide, who is saying we're going to eat and after this we're going to die? How can God command a person who is desperate for help? You know, I mean, her, her first is desperate for help. But the command of God will not check your condition. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. Are you getting me? I mean, the command of God will not check your condition. The command of God will not check your finances. The command of God will not check how much debt you have. Today, today I'm just going to preach today a prophetic message. Are you hearing that? So the command of God does not consider your financial condition, your financial struggles, and your financial impediments, it does, not con it does not consider that, but the command of God will release a word of command over your life of what you have to do. And sometimes when God is saying that to you, it seems as if God is unfair. God, God is not reasonable. God is not really thinking or oh, God is cruel because it seems as if God wants to take the little that you have that is left 
and it's like God says that you know let it go now what am I trying to do to you I'm trying to explain to you the condition of a woman or what a woman might have thought Or let's say that God came through the vision to the woman and said, um, you see, I'm going to send my man here. And you, girl, I've trusted you that you're going to take care of him. <laughs> and the woman wakes up in the morning and says, that dream surely does not come from God. Why? Because God knows it better. Can you see that the woman begins to have more faith at the end when she sees the miracle. She says, now I know we are men of God, but this, all this time, and uh, <laughs> I was just testing you. <laughs> all this time, I was just really taking my chances. But now I know that you are truly a, woman, a man of God. Now, the question is, can you be able to take God's command in whatever condition you find yourself? So that's, that, 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 that's the question. Can you be able to take the command? Because God is challenging the woman is challenging the woman to take not just the command, but the command of sacrifice. The command of sacrifice. So Elijah comes, and the Bible says, as he was coming at the gate, then he sees the woman collecting some sticks. And now, now here's the issue now. When God has spoken to you and you are sure that it's God who has spoken to you, you become bold. Sometimes you say the things that other people don't say because you are sure that God has your back and God has spoken. So now he sees the woman, woman collecting the stakes, then he says, okay, starts with water. And now, you know, he has been traveling for a long distance. Now he starts with water. And then he says, please, just carry me, carry me a water with a cup. And, and the woman says, mm, I think in, 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 in her heart, oh, that's easy. You know, water, easy. <laughs> and then she, and, and the Bible says, while she was going to take the water, then the man added and said, a woman and some bread. Then the woman stopped. And the woman started explaining her condition. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, there are some offerings. <laughs> there are some offerings that are not easy. <laughs> they are not what? They are not easy. So now the woman had to stop and explain herself. <laughs> but when she was asked for water, there was nothing to explain. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there are some offerings that are of water uh, caliber. You know, it, it's easy for, for them to flow when you are asked to do them. It's very easy. But there are some offerings that are at the bread level, baby. Yeah? When God is asking for that, you think twice. You, you want to take a three-day fasting to really find out if it's God who is asking you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure you understand. Are you what I'm trying to say to you? Have you ever heard God whispering something to you and say, give this? <laughs> and you say, wait a minute. I know this mind of mine is playing tricks with me. I know. I know it. I know it. And then God continues. I said to you, give what, 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 what? You say, oh, I know. I know. You know, this, no, no, no. This, this is not God. Let me just take a fasting. You take a fasting and then you have a vision. God is still speaking to you. There are some kind of offerings that even before we give them, we need to explain something or we need to express ourselves or we need to, you, you know, you know, because they, they are not at a water level, but they are at a bread level. 
Let me explain to you what do I mean by that. If I say they are at a water level, water, you don't work hard to fetch water. There were rivers there. Take a packet, take a cup, it's easy. It's easy. You did not work for it. You did not produce it. You did not add flavor. There's no ingredients. There is no sweating from you. It's easy. Somebody say it's easy. I want you to understand that if you live at a water level offering, forget about God changing your life and creating miracles and taking you to high levels. Forget because you are operating at ease. Did you hear what I said to you? You are operating what? At ease, 100 rand is easy, 1,000 rand is easy, 500 rand is easy, so it's easy. So, so, so now, that now God now is using Elijah to say, tell the woman to shift to another level. Tell a woman to shift to another level. Tell a woman now that no, I don't need just what I have produced, but I need what you have produced. I need what you have baked. I need what you have put the resources together. I need what you have been needing you know you know I need what you have spent time putting it into the oven checking it if it's right and tasting it if it's ripe I want to take your strength your power your skill your knowledge I wish I could talk to you are you come trying to say to you so God says, I'm after your skill, I'm after your power, I'm after your energy, I'm after your, you know, I'm after your, your energy, your strength, something that you have worked for, something that you have waited for, something that you have invested for. Let me tell you something. I hate to be a believer that gives at a water level because that one is easy you don't even feel it that one you are so complacent about it it's easy that one can even deceive you and think you are a giver did you hear what I said to you yeah it can even it, oh, okay you know when there's silence let, let, let me just dig deeper now you know let me dig deeper now when it's too usual, when it can be traced, when it can be determined, when you have done it for years, one thing for years, one thing for years, one thing for years, it has become you. So God wants you to outgrow it. And to outgrow it will be hard. Ah, oh God, God is speaking this morning. Are you hearing me? I'm saying that to outgrow it is hard. Ladies and gentlemen, to be where you have been before, it's hard. To give what you have never given before, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. I want you to understand that giving is like lifting weights. After the weight has developed your muscle, you don't feel the weight. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. Oh, you're silent. I'm going to go deeper here. When you lift weights, you don't start with 20 kg. You start where you can. We are men. Have you ever seen men doing dumbbells? Hmm? Men. No, that's not men. As men, we start maybe 5 kg or something, you know? No, not these pink things. You know? No, I suspect you if you, you know. So, so you start. Okay, let's, let's all be men, please. I say we start with 5 kg, right? Then you lift, you lift, you lift, you lift. But when you have lifted the weight too long, you end up not feeling it. 
then it ends up not benefiting you. It's the same weight that sustains you at that level. You can't go, you can't achieve muscles more. Does it make sense to you? So in other words, if this now is too normal, it's time for me to move to 10 kg. But if I start 10, ha, that day coming home, I will feel it in my muscle. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say to you? If you move to another weight, your body will say, uh, I don't know what we did today. Uh, you wake up in the morning. Uh. But with five, you wake up in the morning. <laughs> you wake up with a chorus, right? Because it's easy. The most dangerous thing about giving is complacence. The most dangerous thing is when you know, not that it's, oh, no, 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 no. To, to be there, it's, it's good than to not do it at all. It's still good, but God does not want good for you, he wants best for you. And to go to best may be challenging. So are you getting that now? So the woman now has to explain and say, no, 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 you know, uh, 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 let, let, you don't know my situation. Let, let, me, let me tell you. How many of you have to explain to God of how much bills you have? You tell God about your things as if he does not know. Yeah? I'm, 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 how many of you, you, you feel like when God says give, you, you feel like, oh, wait, you see, Huh? You see, there's a point when God touches the, play, the things the way you need to explain to him to see. Maybe you, maybe you don't know God, but, right? So now, then the woman goes, then the woman says, okay, she goes. Then the, the man of God gives instruction. Then the man of God says, <laughs> he makes it worse. He does not say just bring the bread. He says, listen, it's okay. But he says, when you make it, forget about you. Did you hear that? Are you hearing me? When you make it, what? I believe, my God, that that cake never tasted so good that day. That did not belong to her, but belonged to the man of God. Because now, when you are shifting to another level, there's a tendency of appetite and of appreciating the things that you use not, that, that you are used to, that you did not, you know. Maybe the cake that day, it tasted like, it said, no, I've never baked so good. <laughs> but unfortunately, you have to let it go. <laughs> because the first one is not yours. The first one is for Elijah, you know. So now, it says, bake, bake, spend your energy, spend your effort for something that you're not going to benefit from, something that you're going to give away. I want you to see how God worked on the woman. Because when we read the Bible, it sounds easy, but the truth of the matter, it's not, it was not easy, but it was worth it. Sissy Wynan said it. You see, then the woman goes, and the Bible says, then the woman did according to the word of Elijah. Okay, show me the scripture, please. The woman did according to what? The word of Elijah. But wait a minute. Elijah, you are so cruel. This is a widow, she has a child. She does not have food. With what tenacity that you can say to her, start with me. And over and above, for God's sake, you are a man. You are a man. And, and ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's speak the truth. This is woman abuse from a, a, a reason, reasoning point of view, right? Isn't it a, a woman's abuse? You come, 
into the house where there's no enough food and you demand that you first eat and you're a man. Just imagine you are a man and you want to eat first. There's a child. How can you eat before a child eats? And over and above that, it's a famine. It's dry. There's no food. There's no harvest. There's no rain. And you are here with a big beard. You say, there's a five-year-old. And you say, I must me first. What kind of a man is that? Do you get it? But I want you to, I want you to see that the things of God at times look unreasonable and funny. And sometimes like senseless. And, and, and sometimes like, a, like, like, you know, like, like a, with no wisdom. It look, sometimes it looks like that. I want to tell you that the miracle most of the time is in the senseless situation. And the senseless action that God can command that you take. I want you to understand that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts to the point that they become foolishness his ways are higher than our ways in other words God does not think like we think he does not process information like we process info God is not educated and God is not intelligent So you see now, so if I'm going to move with God in the journey of giving, I have to understand that at times I have to be foolish. Did you get what I'm trying to say to you? Do you know that Paul says it's the foolishness of the gospel that saved us? Do you know that? Do you know that he says it's the foolishness of God foolishness of God that saved us. Do you know that Muslims are trying to argue even this time to say it makes no sense. Why when people sin, you kill your son? It makes no sense. It sounds foolish. It sounds that God does not have brains. So it means that when I'm a giver, I have to understand that foolishness in giving its part and parcel of what a giver should go through. I mean foolishness. I mean foolishness. You are a weed of foolishness. You get into the temple foolishness. You've got children. You don't have a husband, but you've got children. You get into the temple and then you give everything that you are going to live on. A widow entered into the temple and gave everything she was going to live on. That is foolishness. Look, if you don't know it's foolishness, ask her kids how they felt about it. Ask her sister how she felt about it. Ask the relatives how they felt about it. Ask them, did they see her as a responsible mother? No, they saw her that this pastor of yours has messed up with your mind this church of yours has messed up with your mind you've got kids you don't have a husband you are not working you take the everything that you are going to live with and you give it to the church i wish i could talk to you you give it to the church your kids have nothing to eat your kids have no school uniform but you take everything but the issue is that if you have heard from god if god has spoken to you if god has given you a command if god has said to you wake up go and kill i wish i could talk to you I wish I could talk to you. I know the command of God. One day I was sitting and driving 
a car that I was just I just bought and I, I had the voice saying give this car I did not have a second car it was the only car I had but I had I gave it away and walked on my feet yeah, it seems as if I was a fool but I had a command from God I'm not sure if they are givers this morning. I'm not sure if they are givers this morning. Not sponsors, I mean givers this morning. I'm not sure. You are not, we have not given until the Holy Spirit tells you what to give. Until the Holy Spirit tells you how to give. Until the Holy Spirit gives you an instruction. When, what time, how to give. Are you what I'm trying to say to you? Only givers will flow with me this morning. If you are a giver, God will stretch you. There's no giver without stretch marks. Are you hearing me? Why does God stretch you? Because he stretches you more to create for more. To create room for more. How can you accommodate more if you don't want to be stretched? Stretch means that you are growing. Ask a pregnant woman. The bigger the stomach, the more the stretch marks. Hmm? The more it goes, the more you'll see those maps. Are you getting that? Yeah. But when you see those maps, you need to understand that something was small, but it's now bigger than it was before. I wish I could talk to you. Are you what I'm trying to say to you? So you tell your friend that I've become bigger because I've given bigger than what I did before. I've become greater because I've given greater than what I've given before. So God has stretched me and he continues to stretch me and he continues to stretch me and he will stretch me even more. So if you're I hope this morning you are not comfortable. You know why God speaks that? Because we are comfortable. No, we're, just, we're just good. Comfortable. I'm a giver. I know, it's, it's easy. I'm a giver. It's easy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ministry is not easy. If it's easy, then that's not your ministry. But I know that the ministry of giving is giving to all of us. The, the, the ministry of giving, you know, it's like what? You know, it's like what? It's like, it's like testimony. All of us, as children of God, we, we are called to testify. All of us. You don't need, you don't need, you don't need to be a preacher. You, you don't need to be all of us. And number two, giving. It's all of us. Mm. Yeah. Nobody can say, I... No, 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 he's not speaking to me. I'm not called to give. It's not my calling. Right? It's not my calling. No, no. <laughs> ah, that, that one, it's not my calling. Then I have to preach for you to get born again. Then you have to receive Christ. Yeah, because I don't think Christ is, is there with you. <laughs> Amen. So ladies, I want you to check this. The first level of giving, it's you hearing God through the man. Right? That's why there are apostles, there are teachers, evangelists, and things like that, okay? That, that, that. We come to church to hear God using a man or a woman and we go home and say God has spoken 
but we did not see God behind the pulpit. And during the sermon, sometimes you feel that here is God speaking to me. Yeah. Oh, he's speaking to me, you know. Which means neglecting a man or a woman of God's instruction may be neglecting God. I was speaking with my father. I think it was a few days ago. I was, I was in Johannesburg speaking to him a few days ago. And I was speaking about certain things that I was kind of like reporting to him. And then he rebuked me on what I was, based on what I was telling him and just reporting to him. It was, it was not even bad thing, bad news or something like that. But he rebuked, he rebuked me. And that I knew it was God. You get it? Huh? I knew it was what? I knew it was God. So to me, it's very, it was very clear. Ah, there's no need to go through fasting. And, uh, I, but, but, but I, I just want to confirm. I'll go to three-day fast and, 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 and <laughs> no, no, no. There's nothing like that. Are, are, are you getting that? That, 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 that level. That's the, that's, that, 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 that's, that's God's system and that's how God works. Now, you have to understand this. The Bible says that before the miracle took place, then the woman did according to the word of Elijah. After the miracles have happened, then we see that all in all, it was God. Go to that one. Go to that last verse that says, um, God did, or God had Elijah, right? Or oh, what? Uh, in your mouth. Oh, I see. Not this one. There's this one that says, uh, the miracle happened. Is it what? I don't know. Okay, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. After the miracles have happened, the Bible also tells us that not, not this. Oh, yes. You're a man of God. The word of the Lord is in your mouth. Okay, I get you. The, the woman comes now to conviction that Elijah did not send himself. He has nothing to do with, with he has nothing to do being here. One day I told you, okay, I think I'm right. Let me close. One day I told you that we have nothing to do with each other. We're not even related. Do you know that? We are not, me and you are not related. We have nothing to do with each other. So why are you here? <laughs> are you hearing me? I mean, you, you don't know me, I don't know you. I told you my name, maybe you don't even know if it's a fake name. I'm not, if, I'm not even really sure that your name is what you say you are. But we are all here together. But what are we doing here? Well, what are we here to do? So you get it. We are here because he has brought us together. No matter what reason. You may have a reason why you came and I might have a reason why. And the other one may tell the story, different story. It can be different story, but it's one goal. It's one vision. It's God's heart that needs to be fulfilled. The one who has made us to know each other. He went to the cross and he made it possible for us to be here together today and to become CKLI family. You see that? 
And sometimes I wonder when, when people come to church and they fight and they wonder, they make everything about them. Do you know we're not related as you speak and then the saliva is going all over. You see, the, you speak. You know really that you are a stranger to me. Very strange. Strange. In fact, I even don't like your nose, but I survive you because God. So you get it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here for God's agenda. We are here because of Christ. We are not the reason why we are here. He is the reason why we are here. We don't even understand each other's language. To some of you, if I can speak my language, you'll be confused. You speak your language. See? So you get it. But yet, we are one family. This morning, we are being stretched together for effective ministry. For God's economy. For God's money. Because Solomon says, money answers all things. It's not capital A. Money will not take you to heaven. It's small A. It means it can sort almost everything on earth. The more money, I know some, they say more money, more trouble. Trouble has to do with the heart. A lot of money is good. Yeah, a lot of money is, a lot of money is good. It's, that, it's just that when money comes, your heart must be in the right place. Your confidence must be in the right place. Otherwise, you'll be born black and die white like Michael Jackson. Yeah. It's, it's, am I lying now? Was, it, was he a white man or a black man? He was a black man when he was born, when he died. He was a white man. Money can change your race. <laughs> Money can change your race. Money is powerful. I had I saw as well this uh, ex-husband of the Kardashian. You, you know you know him. No, no, no. Her, him, her, her. Is he, she's her now. She, she was, when she was, when he was born, when, when she was born, she was he. <laughs> Guys, there are things you can't do. You just need money. Money can change you from being a boy to a girl. Money is powerful. I saw that man with the makeup. No, she's she now. Sorry. Oh, God. She does not have titties anymore. What's, what's, what's that thing? She does not have... Uh, um, mm. Gone. Money can do that. Do you see that? There are things you desire now that you cannot do because you don't have money. Money is needed when you are righteous in order for you to expand the righteous cause. It's also needed when you are evil, or, or let's say not evil, let's say naughty, when you just want to change you, you <laughs> from being a boy to a, a girl, you know. <laughs> I 
was wondering now you came with me. <laughs> now you are a new girl in town, old girl in town. <laughs> that used to be a man. But you can catch them. The heels are not a joke. Heels are not women as <laughs> telling you. So can you see now? Man, man, can, money can make things what? Possible. Can change. <laughs> can change your race. Can change your gender. Yeah. You come one day and say, no, no, no. I miss Miss Alfred. Miss. <laughs> Don't call me Alfred. Call me Efri. <laughs> money. We talk about money. Are you hearing this? Money can recreate a human being. I mean, recreation can take place. You have been saying you don't like your nose. It's just because you don't have money. If you had money, you will have a sharp nose that you need. You can, you can have a... Man, you can... There's one woman I don't understand. It. She likes to look like uh, these, uh, you know, these, these puppets. What's these? These cartoon. She's got, no. Uh, and big... She's like got a big mouth. They're like cartoon, cartoon things. Yeah, when you see her, you'll see this is a cartoon work. Everything. She, she says she likes it. She goes through surgery. She spends millions and millions and millions, millions and millions and millions. When you have money, money can make you anything, even something you don't understand yourself. When you wake up, you say, I don't understand. And it can be addictive. Well, so you can look at Michael Jackson. There's a time he changed himself. You say, oh, cute boy. I look at the other pictures. I say, cute boy. Yeah, yeah. I say, no, 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 no. Not too bad, good. Then he became more whiter. I said, aha. Uh -huh. Then the nose became more sharper. Ooh. You know, black people have a nose like a tennis ball. Sorry. You know, you know, like that. We, we <laughs> when it comes to breathing, no nation can compete with us. We hoover the oxygen. <laughs> so Michael Jackson did not like that. Now the issue was that sometimes they say the more you do that thing, you get you you, you can get addicted to it. You know, he did it to the point that the, the face said, I can't take it. The face began to, the face that became, got tired. I'm trying to train you because you're going to have money. I don't say don't do uh, that plastic what. Yeah, you can do it with your, if your ear is too big. If you've got satellite, maybe you can chop it and see. <laughs> We are not the same. Some, <laughs> some have DSTV or something. But, <laughs> but God gave you confidently. <laughs> you better be confident yourself, right? Yeah. Amen. Oh, let me leave it now. Otherwise, anyone who joined online, they're going to think it's comedy. No, this is church. Hallelujah. God bless you. Harika Baba Shantara Baba. Amen. Okay, amen. Come on, let's give. God bless you.